<laughs> this is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Ambrose Panico. I'm here to continue our coverage of late-breaking clinical trials, and I'm pleased to have Dr. Sugar with me today, and we'll be talking about the appraisal ATP trial. So first of all, the, the thing I would like to ask you uh, right off the bat is, um, how do you think that this trial will impact our management now? And I do want to point out that what you presented today was that we had a 28% relative risk reduction of all cause shocks in the treatment with the ATP arm, as well as an annual 1% absolute risk reduction. So how do you think this is translatable to now? Well, this is something that needed to be done in terms of uh, it's the first look in a very large population, one of the largest ICD trials, at the value of ATP in an exclusive primary prevention population that is programmed based on current guidelines from programming in terms of rate cutoff and therapy delays. Given that circumstance, we are maximizing the possibility of rhythms that are destined to be self-terminated to not be treated by ATP or shock. And as such, we have a new look in terms of what is the real value and effectiveness of ATP in this population. Given that fact, ATP proved itself successful, statistically superior to the arm that is shock only arm for terminating first events all-cause events, as you said, with a risk reduction of 28%. Now, it's important to understand that that risk reduction represents a number that is significantly less than in the past was perceived as the success of ATP, despite that it's still very useful, but it's less, and that the absolute risk reduction implies that the majority of the population that receives an ICD today will never receive therapy. So for them, the absolute risk reduction is a 1% per year reduction. That is very, a piece of very important information to have a discussion with patients in deciding what platform the patient is more comfortable in receiving given the limitations of endovascular ICDs, subcutaneous ICDs of different types, including the uh, substernal ICD. Yeah, I think it's really interesting how the shared decision making that we do every day with our patients uh, is, just becomes more and more important every day. And you have to have data, real data, to present them so that they are making an informed decision, right? I feel like that term is thrown around so, so frequently, but we don't often have the data to, to have that conversation. And, and really happy to see that you guys took on that, uh, that project. Uh, also interesting uh, from the data was the increase in the VT and the VT storm in the ATP arm. Uh, not sure if you have an answer for that just yet or if it's going to take a little deeper look, but interesting. Definitely will take a deeper look, but that is an intention to treat analysis. We can clearly say that what we tested <clears throat> and the study was powered knowing that as soon as patients are going to receive therapy, they're going to be reprogrammed after the first therapy event. So we needed to ascertain in a very large number of patients what is the result of that. But we have the opportunity of looking in a very large number of patients what is physician behavior and what that physician behavior entails in a long-term follow-up. The mean follow-up was 38 months with uh, some patients follow up to six years. So. What we saw is that in an intention to treat analysis, the aggressiveness in programming ATP far and above that level resulted probably in an increase in VTVF storms. A single episode of ATP or, or a burst of ATP at 88% cycle length have a relatively low acceleration rate at 3.7%, but when that happened, it could result in a VTVF storm, but moreover, when patients are treated, the physicians go and look for more aggressive ATP, which may not be in the best interest of that patient. Right. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Well, thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, I know our listeners will be and viewers will be very happy to uh, see this data and, and, and use it in their practice moving forward. I'm excited to see how it might shape the decisions we make in the future with new platforms that are available. 
Um, and I'd like to point out one other thing, and that is that second only to the impressive turnout for the uh, late-breaking clinical trial today was that this trial was put on and survived a global pandemic. So thank you. Appreciate thank you for it. your dedication to the patients. Thank you for your dedication to our profession. Thank you very much. Pleasure having you. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Ambrose Panico. This is HRS TV. Continue to follow us for more content on YouTube, Twitter, and X, and LinkedIn.